Gold is seemingly about to go on the move again and has already started to move up in a way. So I've continued looking through some of the finances of gold royalty companies after doing an analysis on Sandstorm Gold Royalties last Thursday. Check that out if you haven't already. But I thought it would be interesting to then go compare all of the major gold royalty companies head to head and see which one we should put our money in. Hey, my name is Tucker Krauss and welcome to my channel, where I detail my investing journey as a 14 year old and get my thoughts and opinions on a variety of personal finance related topics and issues. Today's video, I'm gonna be going over some of the major gold royalty companies and doing sort of a face off between them. And just throughout the video, we will get into what these companies are, a quick introduction to their stock, and then comparing some intrinsic values to their current values and just some ratios and all that sort of thing. It won't be as in depth as a single company review of course, if this is just going on the financials, because there's no way I could go do every single little thing about all five of these companies and still have a video under like an hour. So make sure to smash that like button to turn it into gold. And now let's get into an introduction to each of these stocks. All this data is as of market close on April 26th, by the way. First up, Sandstorm Gold Royalties. They're currently trading at $7.80 per share with a market cap of $1.551 billion and a PE ratio of 111.43 with no dividend. Osisco Gold Royalties is currently trading at $12.33 with a market cap of $2.08 billion. They have a PE ratio of 154.12 and a dividend yield of 1.29%. Royal Gold is currently trading at $117.01 per share with a market cap of $7.72 billion. They have a PE ratio of 30.24 and a dividend yield of 1.02%. So at least in the PE ratio, they certainly look a lot better than the prior two. Wheaton Precious Metals Corp is currently trading at $42.31 per share with a market cap of $19.136 billion. They have a PE ratio of 37.51 and a dividend yield of 1.22%. So seems to be about on par with Royal Gold, at least in the PE department. Franco Nevada is currently trading at $141.90 per share with a market cap of $26.683 billion and a PE ratio of 82.98. So looks kind of pricey again over there, but they also have a dividend yield of 0.84%. And a quick recap, a gold royalty company will fund a miner to help set up a mine and in return will be given a small percentage of profits, revenue, or can maybe buy their metals well below spot price. And so overall, they are lower risk, lower reward than just a regular miner. But the main growth prospects for all of these is of course that gold price is likely going to rise regardless of that. And that's of course due to government debt and inflation and all these kind of things. In my sandstorm analysis, I went over some of the PE ratios and a few other comparisons, including EV to EBITDA, which I quickly want to recap here. The main thing here is that Royal Gold does have the lowest and that Osisco, despite having by far the highest PE ratio, actually has quite low EV to EBITDA ratio, at least in comparison to the other gold royalty companies. So the earnings per share over time of Sandstorm is all over the place. And that story continues with, as you can see on screen, pretty much all of the other gold royalty companies. Though one notable thing is that Osisco did manage to finally turn a profit in 2020 so that we can get actually something useful to compare between all of them. Just their average earning per share over the last four years between all of them. The highest is Franklin, Nevada, which makes sense. They are the largest gold royalty company and Osisco is the only one that's actually had negative EPS on average over the last four years, although it should be again be noted that they were at least profitable in 2020. And plus that does mean they actually have very good gross prospects. Same thing with Sandstorm, since they both have quite low earnings per share, whereas Royal Gold and Wheaton have more established and pretty decent earnings per shares, or at least in comparison to Osisco and Sandstorm. Now on to Sandstorm's revenue. The growth has been consistently trending up, though all over the place. Osisco has been, well, it was going up in 2018, but then it's been crashing hard down since then. It'd be interesting to see why that's the case. Then Royal Gold has been not quite as exciting as the prior two, but still kind of all over the place. Something to be noted though, is that Royal Gold's fiscal year ends on June 30th compared to December 31st for all the other companies. Then we can see on to Wheaton, again, kind of all over place, that growth number, though it's steadily increasing. Then Franco Nevada, 
again, all over the place for that growth number. So now let's get to where it actually matters again. Here's the average year over year growth just compared between all of them. And we can see that despite generally being negative in the earnings per share department, that Osisco's actually had the largest revenue growth year over year on average. And compared to in second place is Franco Nevada, which kind of surprised me since they're the largest company and you'd think they'd be growing a lot slower. And then in last place is Royal Gold, but maybe that's kind of a fair trade. You might look, okay, I'll take just 5% if it means the PE ratio is only 30 compared to 100. Now onto their discounted free cash flow and transit value versus their current trading price. Sandstorm is the best here with a price that is 22% below their intrinsic value. And so if you're okay with a 20% margin of safety, that could be something to look into. The worst is Osisco with a current trading price as 65% above their intrinsic value. But we'll get into a story that turns it around a little bit later, don't worry about it. And then Royal Gold is trading at 3% below their intrinsic value and Wheaton 12% below, and that's that's not really too good. That's still way too close to the intrinsic value. You wanna be buying something on a much larger sale than that. And then Franco Nevada is definitely a little bit overpriced again, but not as bad as Osisco. Now onto an asset-based model versus their current trading price. To find get the asset-based model. Essentially all you do is take the fair value of their assets, subtract the fair value of their liabilities and divide by shares outstanding. That'll give you the ABM. And for most companies, the ABM is going to be a quite a bit lower than their current trading price. It's usually meant as a floor value. That's why the most of these companies here are trading well above their ABM. But the interesting thing is that Osisco performed really badly in the discount free cash flow is actually at negative 30%. So that means they're trading 30% below their asset based model, which is typically the floor value for a company which actually looks really really good and so that just kind of amazed me although in, but you can see here that it looks pretty bad for franco nevada and for sandstorm it's actually not too terrible looking they're in second place but it's pretty distant second in conclusion royal gold and wheat and precious metals corp look pretty mediocre they're trading slightly below their intrinsic value but nowhere near enough to be considered a safe buy, not to mention their PE is still fairly high in the 30s range, which compared to the historical PE of the S&P 500 is still very high, although not as bad as some of the others. Then Franco Nevada also doesn't really look that good. They've still got a PE in the 80s and their asset base model looked really bad, not to mention their discounted free cash flow just didn't look that good either. And then, so it really comes down to Osisco and Sandstorm and being the two smallest companies, they also have the most growth potential. So it really comes down to Osisco and Sandstorm. So when you're trying to decide what to buy between the two of them, it does seem that, okay, what matters more to you about the company having good financials or about, okay, what assets and what streams and royalties are these companies getting? If you care more, okay, is this company being run effectively? Is it getting positive free cash flow? All these kind of things. Or do you care more about, hey, what's the growth prospects on this company with how their minds look and whatnot? Personally, because I'm more of a value investor, I don't know if I can bring myself to buy either of these just with their PE ratio being over 100. I just don't think I can do it. I, I think they both have very good growth prospects, but just with my investment philosophy, I'm probably going to avoid both of them. But because I still like precious metals, I'm probably gonna continue looking for more and maybe one that's undervalued. It's not to say you have to avoid these companies. If you don't mind taking a little bit of risk and you kind of like growth companies, then I, these two do look actually quite good. Sandstorm Financial and Osisco based on their assets. So that comes down to your personal choice but it does seem that definitely comes down to those two. So if you enjoyed, make sure to smash that like button if you haven't already, as well as subscribe and hit the notification bell and leave your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below. If you want to see more videos from me, there is a much more in-depth Sandstorm gold analysis that now on screen, as well as my channel icon if you want to go explore around there. And so thanks for watching and I will see you next time.